So since we're on the subject of polysaccharides, let's focus on a specific group of polysaccharides that exist inside our body that plays a very important role as we'll see in just a moment. And this group of polysaccharides is known as glycosaminoglycans. So what exactly is a glycosaminoglycan? Well, a glycosaminoglycan is a special type of polysaccharide that consists of repeating disaccharide units. So we have two sugars that repeat again and again and again. Now, one of these sugars is an amino sugar, and what that means is it contains an amino group. And at least one of these sugars in the repeating disaccharide unit is actually modified with some type of negatively charged group, for instance, a sulfate group or a carboxylate group. Now, to see exactly what we mean, let's take a look at the following four examples of glycosaminoglycans that we'll find inside our body. So one of these glycosaminoglycans we actually discussed previously, so that is heparin. We said heparin is this glycosaminoglycan that is produced and released by immune cells we call mast cells. And we believe that heparin plays a role in immunity, it plays a role in actually helping our body fight off infectious agents. On top of that, heparin also acts as an anticoagulant. So this is what the structure of that repeating disaccharide unit in heparin actually looks like. So on the first sugar, we have the carboxylate group that bears a negative charge and the sulfate group that also bears a negative charge. On the second unit, the second uh, sugar of this disaccharide unit, we also have this sulfate group attached to this carbon, as we have in this particular case, and we have the amino group that also contains this sulfate. So we see that heparin contains many of these negative charges, and these negative charges give the heparin its functionality. Now, the other three glycosaminoglycans we haven't yet discussed, and we're going to focus on them in this lecture. So we have chondroitin 6 sulfate, or simply chondroitin sulfate, we have keratin sulfate, and we also have a hyaluronate. Now, let's take a look at chondroitin sulfate. In chondroitin sulfate, this is our disaccharide unit. So once again, we have the amino group found here, we have the sulfate group, and we have the carboxylate ion group. Here, we have the carboxylate ion group, and we have the amino group. And for this particular one, we have the amino group, and we have this sulfate group. Now, generally speaking, these glycosaminoglycans don't exist by themselves inside our body. Usually, the glycosaminoglycans actually covalently associate with proteins to form a category of modified proteins known as proteoglycans. So what exactly is a proteoglycan? Well, a proteoglycan is basically a protein molecule that has attached to some type of glycosaminoglycan or many glycosaminoglycans. In fact, usually, the glycosaminoglycan is the predominant component of the proteoglycan, and usually 95% of the proteoglycan by mass consists of glycosaminoglycans, and only 5% consist of that protein component. Now, what exactly are the functions of proteoglycans? Well, proteoglycans, these protein sugar biomolecules, have four important functions which I've listed on the board. And the first two functions we're going to focus on in this lecture. So, function number one is it acts as joint lubricants. Function number two, it basically functions in the structural components of tissues, and that includes connective tissue, for instance, bone and cartilage. Number three, it functions to bind cells to extracellular matrix, and number four, it actually functions to move molecules through the extracellular matrix. Now, one example of a well-studied proteoglycan that we know a lot about is agrican. And agrican is found in the extracellular matrix of connective tissues such as cartilage. And this is what we're going to focus on in this lecture. So, if we examine cartilage, we have many different types of cells. And surrounding the cells, we have the extracellular matrix. 
Now, the major component of cartilage is collagen. So the major component of the extracellular matrix is of course collagen. And collagen, as we know, gives the extracellular matrix its structure and it gives it tensile strength. Now, the other major component of the extracellular matrix in cartilage is agrican, the example of the proteoglycan. Now, agrican, what it does is it acts as a lubricant and it acts to actually absorb the shock. It absorbs and dissipates impact forces, as we'll see in just a moment. So, in the same analogous way that if we are in a car crash, it's that airbag that acts to absorb the impact force. In this particular case, it's the aggregate that actually acts to absorb the impact force and prevent any type of damage to our tissue and to our body. So the collagen gives tensile strength, support, and structure, and the aggregate helps dissipate impact forces. It absorbs those impact forces and lubricates the joints. And to see exactly what that means, let's take a look at the structure of aggregate. Now, the protein component of aggregate basically consists of three globular domains, G1, G2, and G3, and these are shown on the board. So this is globular domain G1, globular domain G2, and globular domain G3. And this entire, pro and this entire purple structure is that protein component of the aggregate, of the proteoglycan. Now, between G2 and G3, we have this long section of amino acids, and it's the sequence of amino acids between the G2 and the G3 globular domains of aggregate that basically are able to actually bind two important types of glycose aminoglycans, namely the chondroitin 6 sulfate, which is shown in red, and the keratin sulfate, which is shown in brown. So these red projections are chondroitin 6 sulfate. The brown projections are the keratin sulfate, and they're bound to the actual sequence of, uh, of amino acids between the G3 and the G2 globular domains of agrican. Now, if we take a look at G1, the G1 domain of agrican is actually bound to this green fiber. And the green fiber is actually this same a hyalur a hyaluronate that we spoke about previously. So this is the hyaluronate backbone, which is another example of a glycose aminoglycan. So these three different glycose aminoglycans are found within the connective tissue in cartilage and inside our joints. And together, these components play a role to basically absorb and dissipate the impact forces and prevent any type of damage. The question is, how? How is this actually achieved? Well, to see how that is achieved, let's take a look at the following three diagrams. And remember that these projections, the red projections and these brown projections, all consist of these repeating disaccharide units. And these repeating disaccharide units, this one and this one, contain these modified side chain groups that have negative charges. Now, what does that mean? Well, because these disaccharide units have been modified with these negatively charged groups, that means they will be attracted to water molecules. Why? Well, because water molecules are polar. Water molecules contain a partial positive charge on the hydrogen ions. And what that means when this when these aggregate molecules are there um, are in their initial position, we'll see that a bunch of water molecules will be absorbed and attached onto these uh, onto these glycosaminoglycans. The red ones are the chondroitin sulfates, and the brown ones are the keratin sulfates. And so we're going to have non-covalent interactions between the water molecules and these glycosaminoglycans. So we see that the glycosaminoglycans, as a result of their negative charge, they will be able to actually absorb the water molecule, and so this section will be lubricated with water. Now, what happens when we apply some type of force? So, for instance, let's say I jump 
And when I jump, what happens is the joints in the knees basically experience an impact force. And what happens is a force is applied onto the aggregate. And when a force is applied onto the aggregate, that basically forces all these water molecules to leave this section. And that basically slightly deforms this aggregate protein molecule, the proteoglycan. And when this is essentially deformed, it absorbs some of that force. Now, as soon as that force, as soon as that pressure is released, these water molecules will rush right back. Why? Well, because water will tend to move down its concentration gradient from a high to a low concentration. And also, the water molecules will essentially be attracted to these negatively charged groups on the glycosaminoglycans. And so, once the water is basically absorbed back into this area, that will basically cause these aggregates to basically spring back into their initial position. And so together this process allows the absorption of those different types of impact forces that prevents damage and it also allows the lubrication of the area. And this is exactly what happens inside our joints. Now, a medical condition known as osteoarthritis basically causes the breakdown and the degradation of these aggregate molecules, and that's exactly what causes the pain that is due to osteoarthritis. So we see that polysaccharides are very important molecules. They don't only act as energy storage sources, they also act to basically give us structure and they act to lubricate and prevent any type of damage, basically help absorb and dissipate the impact forces that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis.